hello everyone welcome back to a new vlog i wasn't planning on vlogging this weekend but i really want to just get back into the swing of it so i thought i would just do a random vlog this weekend show you what we get up to i think it's just going to be very nice and chilled so it is friday today and my last vlog went up this morning i'm kind of just carrying on from yesterday i was going to start the vlog this morning but i was in a bit of a rush and i had my first brand shoot this morning so if you don't know i used to have a business called monday the studio where i did content creation for brands and i started it when i was at uni and i absolutely loved it i worked with brands on their social media e-com shoot social content street style i kind of started off creatively directing things so i would source models if you guys have followed me for a while you may remember um, I used to source models, take all the product into London, sh do street style shoots, um, I would shoot product at home and yeah I worked really closely with a lot of brands and as I have kind of come along on my journey with this platform and Lauren Grace life platform it became really apparent to me that I could kind of merge the two so I've kind of taken a back seat with Monday the studio and and I've actually decided just to kind of end that business and take everything in house so I now still shoot content for brands I still do that but I don't source models anymore I use myself and I work really closely with so many amazing brands on shooting so I literally do everything like styling modeling um I do get somebody to shoot my content but if I'm doing it at home I self shoot it and it's great and I love doing it it's so much fun and it means I can get really creative with a brief working with a brand but I'm not posting that content myself it's for them to use so anyway I did that this morning I was shooting with Katie Loxton a brand that I've absolutely loved for ages and I actually went to Ibiza with them for a shoot last summer and it was incredible my first proper um work trip like a paid job work trip to Ibiza and it was incredible and I could not believe I went it was incredible um so yeah feeling really good back in the swing of shooting and it felt amazing really happy with the content that we got and I got back sent it all over it's now the afternoon and I've got a few little bits and bobs to do in the apartment before this evening but I thought I would just share a couple of things with you and I know a lot of you have been asking me to review my ski wear so I thought I would do that in this vlog but before I do that, I wanted to share this little um, PR gift from Necessaire, stocked on Space NK, and you guys know the Necessaire body serum is my favourite thing ever to use on my body, I love it, and I actually also love the body exfoliator, I thought I would show you how cute these little minis are, because travelling season's coming up, and this is not an ad by the way, I just thought I would show you because I think it's great, um, I'm going to keep these for summer and put them in my wash bag whenever I travel because it's a full set of all the must-have necessary products and they are absolutely adorable. So you've got the body wash, this smells like eucalyptus and it is so gorgeous, I love it. I finished my, I had a full size one, I've already finished it. You've got the body exfoliator, a little mini one. I always use this when I'm kind of like prepping my body to tan. I always do like a full body exfoliation with this. And then I've also got the body lotion and the body serum, a little mini. How cute is that? I always want to bring this with me, but it's such a big bottle. So this is perfect. I'll link this little kit down below if I can find it on Space NK. Because I just think it's so nice. Um, and then I actually ordered this from um, Amazon and I was gifted this ages ago, years ago, and I used them and was very impressed. So this is from Zit Sticker and it's a spot clarifying patch kit. Basically, I you know I said in my last vlog that I'd had loads of breakouts on my cheek and I think I'm at the end of it now and hopefully within the next week this would have completely cleared up. But I've got, I think I've got five really big um under the skin mounds they feel like they're not actual spots because they're not coming to the surface but they're just under the skin so i can't get them extracted or anything like that so i thought i would give these a go to try and subside them a bit quicker and i used these last night and i was very impressed so i'm going to use them again tonight use a little um wipe 
like an alcohol wipe which has salicylic acid tea tree oil and vitamin e to like completely cleanse the area obviously once you've done you've cleansed your skin and stuff and then you apply the little sticker onto the spot and it's supposed to draw out all the impurities and all the like nasty bits in the spot and help to dry it out quicker so yeah i used this last night i definitely noticed that three i've got like a selection of three here and then two back here um these three are nearly gone they're just red marks now so oh my god stop oh my god stop sorry fleur has just told me the most incredible thing i'm not gonna say because she hasn't announced it yet <laughs> Oh my god okay that is so exciting um anyway i'll link these down below i'm gonna try them again tonight i'll let you know what i think round two and secondly i really wanted to mention this book i did just do a story about this sorry if the light's changing by the way the sun is going down now so it's getting a little bit darker this book is unbelievable i read this in like a few days and oh, it's so good it's like a murder mystery kind of thriller vibe every single ending of the chapter leaves you on a cliffhanger so i just wanted to keep reading the whole time and i stayed up till midnight which is unheard of for me but this is so good i really recommend it i'm gonna link it down below i absolutely loved it definitely recommend reading that and if you do please let me know because i'd love to hear what you thought so obviously today is friday we are actually gonna go out tonight i think we're just gonna go to the pub for a couple of drinks anyway i am going to go and do the bedding and stop procrastinating because this has been 13 minutes of me chatting okay the bedroom is all lovely and ready to jump into tonight i love putting fresh bedding on on a friday because it just feels like so amazing at the weekend especially when you're home all weekend and we usually lie in bed for a little bit longer at the weekend so it's just so nice anyway i thought i would take this time now to chat to you a little bit about skiing i've had a lot of questions in my dms um asking me how i found it did i enjoy it um what pieces of clothing were really good anything i wouldn't recommend after my pack with me so i really wanted to get that uploaded onto youtube as soon as i can so if you don't want to hear about the skiing skip forward i'll put the timestamp of when i finish talking about skiing on the screen in case you don't want to hear it but hopefully this will be useful for you the first day of skiing i found really difficult and do you know what it wasn't even the skiing that i found difficult it was everything else so i had an instructor for five days so i had five lessons with my instructor and that alone i was quite nervous for because i'd heard horror stories from jack's family of instructors they had when they were little that were really horrible and didn't speak english and i'm an adult so when you're a child, I think you kind of just go with it. And if you're crying, it doesn't matter. As an adult, it's a bit more embarrassing and you kind of just have to suck it up and go with it. And I was really nervous about it. Luckily, my instructor was absolutely amazing. Um, his name was Antoine and oh my God, I loved him so much. I actually feel like I've made a friend. He loved Jack. We spent New Year's Eve with him on the mountains and he was just the nicest man I've ever met he was the best teacher he made me feel so confident and so relaxed as well which i think is really important so yeah that was the first thing i was so lucky that i had an incredible instructor and a lot of you were asking what company i booked my lessons with i went with oxygen and my instructor was called antoine so if you are going to val and you want to have antoine teach you you can request to have him he was incredible i absolutely loved him and if any of you do go to val Desert and have lessons with him please mention my name because we got on like a house on fire and yeah we just had the best time so skiing was amazing the actual skiing but everything else really overwhelming i'm quite an anxious person and i kind of forget that i'm quite anxious i think because in my day-to-day -day life i don't really get that anxious anymore um, things that used to make me really spiral were getting the train on my own, 
even when I was really young, going to the toilet on my own in a restaurant, I used to get so terrified and I would just rather not do it. But I've got older, I've kind of grown out of all of those things and I don't really get anxious anymore. So I completely forgot that feeling and that first day skiing, so I woke up, was absolutely fine. I just took everything in my stride. I hired my boots, I hired my skis and I did all of that with Jack's family. They helped me, they showed me what to do, blah, blah, blah. Jack came with me to the bottom of the slope, which is where you meet the ski schools. And I met my instructor, we went up together. I felt fine. I didn't feel stressed or like wobbly in any sense. Um, I had the ski lesson, it was fine, like really good. I loved it, it went really well. And then I met Jack's family for lunch afterwards. We literally met at the bottom of the slope where I was, um, like the nursery slope where I was having my lesson. Had lovely lunch, it was so good, and I felt really excited for the trip. I thought like, oh my god, if this is how the trip's gonna be, I'm really looking forward to it. They all went off to ski for the day, and I was then on my own for the afternoon, which I didn't really think about that part of it, and in hindsight, I should have known that's how it would be, and it wasn't the end of the world actually, but the first day was just so many new things, and it's the things like the bubble, and the chairlift, getting that on my own, I just didn't want to do. I didn't know how to do it properly. And all of those like childhood feelings of not wanting to do things on your own came flooding back. And I just suddenly was like, oh my God. So when Jack was like, oh, you'll be okay going back to the chalet on your own, won't you? Um, you can just get the bubble down, like it'll be easy. I just, I literally was like, no. And I didn't want to sound uh, pathetic by saying no I don't want to go on my own so I just didn't really so I just didn't really say anything and Jack obviously knows me so well so he looked at me and thought oh my god why did I say that like obviously she's not gonna want to do that so he came with me of course he would never ever ever leave me on my own and I started crying we got onto the bubble and I just absolutely broke down and I just panicked so much and I think like that feeling in your head where you're like oh my god right this is what it's going to be like the whole time I'm going to have to do everything on my own I'm going to feel really guilty and for like making Jack come with me or whatever and I just had an absolute panic and I cried so so much and oh bless Jack he felt so bad he's like I'm so sorry I didn't mean to make you cry like oh my god it's fine like, I'll come with you like it doesn't matter I shouldn't have said that and I was like it's not even about that it's just overwhelming I just felt so overwhelmed and I went back to the chalet and literally cried myself to sleep and had a nap for about three hours also we had just had a 10 hour car journey and I get really car sick so I think it was just those two days in one were just hectic and I just had an absolute breakdown um but I woke up from my nap I spoke to Nadia who also skis so she was like look I knew it was going to be like this you'll be fine I spoke to my mum and I was like pull yourself together it's going to be fine and the next day I I woke up actually still feeling a little bit like oh god it's going to be like that again because I'd already had a really massive like ah I don't know if I can do this so um I went back into my second lesson I said to Antoine like I'm feeling a little bit nervous now like I had a bit of a cry yesterday and I just told, I was just really honest and he said to me, as long as you're comfortable with what we're doing and you're telling me how you're finding it and you're not just going, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We can go on that slope, whatever. It's fine. Like we need to communicate. You need to tell me how you're feeling. I don't want to push you too hard, but at the same time, you're really good. So like I can push you too hard. So after that day, I was absolutely fine. And by day three, four, I was so much more confident and I actually really enjoyed it. So moving over to the outfits, I didn't really post a lot of content, mainly because I had my ski lessons in the morning and then Jack's family were off skiing and I could have gone and joined them, but they ski like way up into the mountains. They do like black runs. And I just wasn't confident enough to do that. So I decided for the trip that I would just focus on my lessons and then have the afternoon on my own and just relax and take it as an actual holiday. So that is why I didn't shoot much content because I was on my own most of the time. But everything I bought, I wore and absolutely loved. I, If you want to go back to my pack with me, I'll leave it linked in the description box. Everything I bought was perfect and I'm so, so glad I picked everything I did. A lot of you were asking what are kind of like the must-have things that you would say now you've been. 
and I think a really good pair of socks is so key because your feet will get cold. I was really lucky that the boots that I hired had like a fur lining, so they were actually really comfortable, but that is quite rare. I know Jack's family have said in the past, like sometimes higher boots aren't good. Um, they all have their own boots now because they go every year, but until I know that I'm gonna be going skiing frequently, I will not be purchasing my own boots. Um, hiring them is just as easy. I also would say to bring some kind of snood or like a neck scarf because on the chairlifts it was freezing cold. Actually skiing, I didn't really wear it that much because I wasn't cold, I just kind of had it like down here. But on the chairlift I kept my goggles on because they just kept my face warm and then I would bring my snood literally up to here and Antoine would be talking to me and I'd be like, mm-hmm mm-hmm because <laughs> it was so cold i think next time i go because i definitely will be going back i won't bring as many coats for going out i think i packed way too many coats for just general wear not actual ski coats so next time i will probably invest in a couple more ski outfits just so i've got more variation because i did end up wearing like, the same thing all the time and six days of wearing ski clothes i only brought two jackets so i did feel like i was wearing the same thing all the time so i think instead of bringing five different coats for going for dinner <laughs> i will wear one coat for going for dinner because you literally take it off as soon as you go to the restaurant and i will use that space in my suitcase to bring um a couple more ski outfits a different salad pets different jackets and yeah that is literally the only thing i would do differently um i also did try on a pair of moon boots when i was there and i absolutely loved them i didn't buy them for the ski trip because i didn't think they'd suit me but i tried them on and i actually really liked them so i think that's also something else i would invest in because they are so warm another thing um, a lot of you are asking is how do you actually feel after skiing? Like, are you really tired? Are you exhausted? Are you in pain? And I only had a few falls and most of the time, the falls that I had were just the most ridiculous reasons. One time I fell and this was my worst fall and I got the biggest bruise on the side of my um, bum. It was so bad. It was like this big and literally like black and purple. But I didn't even know it was there because it didn't hurt when I fell. But I fell because I was skiing down and it was quite a steep bit of the slope and Antoine skied backwards in front of me, kind of like telling me what to focus on and what to remember and blah, blah, blah. And these two people came really fast next to me and it made me jump. And as it made me jump, I then stopped focusing on what I was doing with my skis. Because at the time I was trying to do parallel skiing rather than um, snowplow. And I crossed the front of my skis over and I literally tumbled completely. Like I could see my feet and skis in the air like tumbling down. And I landed at the bottom and I had snow in my goggles. Like my goggles had gone like that and there was snow in my goggles. And Antoine came over like all worried. Like, oh my God, oh my God, are you okay? Are you hurt? I was like, no, I'm fine. And I could not stop laughing. I was like, look at me. I've got snow in my goggles. <laughs> anyway, even though I fell a couple of times, it doesn't really hurt. The only thing I would say is it took me a couple of days to get used to the feeling of the muscles working because I do Pilates. I do think I have quite good core strength and balance and I do think that really helped with my skiing, especially my progress of skiing. Um, I progressed really quickly, which I was so pleased about and I think it's down to that. But parts of my body were aching that I didn't think could even ache like my arms were so sore and i actually realized my arms were so sore because when you go onto the chairlift it's like a tiny little steep hill to get up like really really small and most people ski really fast into the chairlift and just go woo in i didn't do that so i skied down panicked slowed down loads and then i had to try and get like up this tiny little hill into the it's not even a hill, like a slope, a slope, a tiny little slope into the queue for the chairlift. And Antoine was telling me either go sideways, put your skis in and like walk up so you're not sliding down. Or you can do this thing where you put your skis like outwards and tilt them in and then like walk like a duck. I couldn't do that. I just could not do that. Every time I did it, I would just slide back. My hack for getting up the slope was literally put your skis straight and use your arms with your poles and just pull your body up the little slope. I mean, it's not far. It's literally like two skis length 
And Antoine, every time, was like, your arms are going to be hurting. Stop doing that. And I just literally would, like, crouch down and go, Ugh, <laughs> pull myself up. And it was very funny. Um, but that is why my arms were probably absolutely killing. But apart from that, it was fine. I wasn't really aching. My legs weren't really hurting. But I was only skiing for three hours a day. So I wasn't doing, like, a full day. So, anyway, I hope that's answered some of your questions. I'm sorry this is so long. Um, I just wanted to answer everything in one video. If you do have any other questions that I haven't answered, just leave them below in the comments or DM me on Instagram and I will answer them the best that I can. If any of you have any ski trips coming up in the rest of the season, then enjoy. I'm sure you will absolutely love it. If you've never been skiing before um, and you want some tips, DM me. I'm happy to answer and just enjoy it. I think even if you're really struggling with the actual skiing and you can't get your head around it, just enjoy the process. And the scenery is so beautiful. The restaurants are incredible. The food is amazing. I'm actually really looking forward to potentially going back, probably not this year because we're moving house, but next year in March, we will probably go again. And I'm hoping to go with some friends and just, yeah, have a really nice time. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that little section here. Hopefully Jack should be home in the next hour and we can make our way to the pub. Slight change of plan. We are no longer going to the pub. We decided to just have a nice cozy evening in. We are still gonna get a takeaway. I think we're gonna go to a place that opened a couple of months ago. Um, near us which is like a local really nice actually it's like a healthy kebab kind of vibe so I guess it's kind of like Turkish food um, or Greek maybe they do like Greek salads chicken kebabs like pita halloumi fries um, and I've decided I want to put a loungewear set on so I feel nice I always love when you're staying in rather than just wearing like an old tracksuit or like random leggings I like to wear a nice loungewear set because I just feel a bit more put together so I am going to carry on wearing this bodysuit that I definitely need to wash tomorrow because I've already worn it for two days straight and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I think I might go online later and order this bodysuit in the other colours. I think they've got a nude and a black. I'm just so obsessed with how it looks. A couple of you on Instagram asked me if it's see-through. Obviously you can see my bra but I'm not really that fussed about that. Um, so if you don't want it to be see-through maybe don't get it. But I love it. I just think it's really flattering. I don't know what it is about it, but I love it. So I'm going to wear my bodysuit with these kind of oatmeal-y knitted joggers from h and I've had these for ages. I don't know if they're still in stock, but if they are, I will link them below. And I'm going to wear my White Company cardigan that I'm obsessed with. You're probably sick of seeing this cardigan because I've worn it so much, but I just love how it looks i just think it's so gorgeous so yeah i'm also going to put on some fresh cashmere socks because it's literally all i live in for christmas i got so many pairs and i was so happy because they're just the best socks ever so yeah little loungewear look complete please excuse the half made bed behind me the pillowcases are still drying um but this is my loungewear outfit of the evening I absolutely love these joggers they're just so comfortable and I always find after I've washed them they do shrink a little bit but once I've worn them once they go back to their nice kind of like baggy um size which I really like and they actually match perfectly with this cardigan so I will link um all of this down below if I can find these joggers and they're still in stock if not I will link some similar ones
everyone it is saturday i haven't vlogged much today you would have seen oh my god my hands are so pale you would have seen this morning i got up really early jack slept in for um quite a while this morning had a nice lion and i made some banana oat bars and i didn't follow a recipe i kind of just made it up and i don't think it was too bad so i will leave the recipe down below huh you didn't follow a recipe? no yeah but you just don't like that stuff i really like them so i will leave the recipe below We are just about to head out for dinner with a couple of friends, which will be lovely. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it because we've just had such a chill day today, which is why I haven't vlogged much because we've literally just been like hanging around the house watching Below Deck, which has been lovely. I thought I would show you my outfit. So I am wearing this really old lacy um, top from Lipsy actually, I've had this for years and years. I think this was one of the first pieces of clothing that um, I was gifted and I literally love it. Oh no, my battery's flashing. Um, and then I'm wearing my H&M skinny jeans, just the gray ones, my and other stories boots. These are quite old, so I won't be able to link them, but I'll find some similar ones. And then my Because of Alice coat, which I am absolutely obsessed with this coat. It's got like a asymmetric button so it buttons up inside and on the outside so it's like really chic i love it and then chloe bag makeup is the same as my previous vlog um my favorite lip combo this lip gloss is unreal and i'm ready to go so i will probably catch up with you tomorrow um i'm gonna bring my phone so i might video a couple of bits of dinner but i may forget so if i do i will see you tomorrow I thought I would just quickly show you my outfit in full so you can see it in the mirror. But this coat, I'm literally obsessed with the silhouette. When you do it up, it's gorgeous. So anyway, I will see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday today. I feel like this has been the longest weekend ever. Um... We are just about to head out this morning. We're going to go to Tillingham, which is a wine vineyard. And it's also a hotel, a restaurant. We were recommended it ages ago um, from one of Fleur and Tony's friends, actually. So, yeah, I keep seeing it and I keep hearing about it a lot. So it's quite local to us. It's not that far away. So we're going to have a drive over there and I'm really looking forward to it. I think we're going to get some lunch. Freshly showered, washed my hair. Curled it again so it pretty much looks the same as yesterday. And I'll show you what I'm wearing. So today's outfit of the day. I don't know if we're going to go on a walk. I don't really know what it's going to be like there. So um, I'm wearing a brown knit from And Other Stories. My really old H&M coat that you guys loved when I first got this. I think I've had it for like three years now. I just love it. It's quite a nice country coat to throw on. It's really nice and warm. My same H&M skinny jeans I always wear. And I've got these massive socks on because I'm going to wear my um, boots that I would like, my walking boots, because they're brown and I can get them muddy if we do go for a walk. And I've got my Celine sunnies on. So let's get in the car and head there. of wine which is from the vineyard which was really nice and we're just going for a little walk in the countryside and it's just so lovely i really recommend coming here we um it's really weird because we literally live like 20 minutes away but we've never been so 
yeah really enjoyed it and definitely will be coming back in the summer because they've got like an outside seating area and like this full outside section where they do pizzas i think it's like wood-fired pizzas as well um so yeah definitely will be coming back in the summer and um I would actually love to come with Flo and Tony because Flo and Tony love wine. Like they did a full on sommelier, what do you call it? Sommelier, sommelier course. So we'll have to get them to stay over for the weekend and bring them to book a taxi. That'll be really nice. Anyway, we're gonna go on our little walk now. We're going on this path. The lady in the restaurant said that uh, we can follow this pathway up the hill and there's like a little viewing platform. So. That is what we're gonna do. London honey, honey with Italian trash. Millie bought me that. Aren't you posh? Okay, we're back home and we went to Waitrose on the way back and bought some bits for dinner and we are also gonna make a chocolate mousse because at lunch we had a chocolate mousse <laughs> and it was really nice so we decided we're gonna try and make it tonight. So that's what we're gonna do now. It seems quite easy. The recipe was from BBC Good Food. Oh, I need to get my phone. Um, so I'll link the recipe below in case you wanna try it yourself. But, yeah, we're gonna make a chocolate mousse. 150 grams of 70% dark chocolate, six egg whites, two tablespoons of golden caster sugar, and four tablespoons of creme fraiche. And that's it. So, it can't be that hard, right? So, firstly, we need to melt the chocolate. Isn't it weird that you can actually do this with eggs? Yeah. Oh, do you mind doing this for a bit? Yeah. Okay, the chocolate mousse is being eaten. We put it in just like normal water glasses and look how light and fluffy this is. I don't know if you can really see but Oh my god, it tastes so good. We used... Mm, we used um, green and black 70% chocolate. And it literally tastes like you would get it in a restaurant. I am so impressed. Also, it was so easy to do. So, I'm definitely going to do that again. Delish. Very pleased. Mmm.